Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. Ezra 8 verse 21 to 22. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road because we had spoken to the king saying, the hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him, but his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. So these are are powerful words that I always find encouraging, particularly in my time of fasting, but they don't only apply to your time of fasting. Fasting specifically, prayer and fasting, that is, um, is a great time of seeking God. It's a specific, you know, sort of um, sanctified time of seeking God because in that time you are... It's, it's the most intense time of what, that you use to seek God on any particular scripture um, about any particular situation. But then again, if you are the sort of person who's constantly um, reading God's word and meditating on God's word and using the word of God to apply to your life, let the word of God um, you know, change the way you act, the way you think, the way you do things. If you are governed by the way, way of God, in other words, uh, then you are the, you are a person who seeks God. And this scripture here confirms and affirms that the hand of God is upon those for good who seek him. There's a version that says the gracious hand, hand of the Lord rests upon those who seek him. You know, the visual I have on this is literally the hand of God literally just hovering over you all the time. You, there's just something special about those who seek God particularly in time of prayer and fasting. In that time, when you seek God, uh, prayer and fasting attracts a lot of demonic activity around you. Why? Because you are, it's a time of, it's just a time of concentration. Like I'm not going to claim that I can explain it. I just know I've experienced it. You will experience it through intense dreams. Uh, You will experience it through, you know, weird things happening in your home. You'll experience it through, even you yourself, as you go through prayer and fasting, you're just somehow able to achieve pretty much the impossible. I mean, how do you go without food, um, you know, and somehow be able to be sustained? Somehow your body sustains you. Somehow, in fact, uh, especially when you sort of experience the longer term fast, you find that your body is very extremely energetic. Um, you do amazing things. It's the opposite of what people think, actually. Um, People think, oh, how can you do that? How can you fast for so long? How can you go without food? Some people don't even think it's possible to go without food, just missing one meal, missing breakfast. They think, oh my gosh, no, your body needs that. And that that, the the Bible says, uh, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. No, it wasn't even Jesus. It was written earlier and then he quoted it to the devil. And he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's not just food that keeps you alive. You're not alive because you're eating. Your, your, the word of God also keeps you alive. Um, and so when you when you go through periods of seeking God, there's just something you experience the supernatural. That's why you need to be clean in, what, in, in your heart. You need to harbor no malice, no negative. Just get rid of any negative energy. And even in a time of prayer and fasting, if you find yourself starting to think anything negative no matter how small it is uh, just repent and cancel it and rebuke it in the name of jesus christ you don't want to be that way Uh, but the hand of god it says here um the hand of god the hand of our god is upon all those uh, for good who seek him this is just to uh, reassure you and to um and to strengthen you and to encourage you that in your time of prayer and fasting, let's just go straight to the spirit realm. You're going to experience extremely strange dreams. You're going to experience, you're going to see yourself do very strange things in the dream. You're going to, some some dreams might make you feel so ashamed and you think particularly this, particularly the sexual ones, they don't, you know, those, that's just the enemy trying to take you back to where you were and where were you? You were in bondage. Because what you need to understand is that, um, any sexual encounter in the physical realm is in agreement um sex is a covenant basically is a is a symbol of covenant in the spirit realm and so those entities are coming to re-establish or to reforge the covenants the agreements that you had with them before 
uh, where they could do whatever they wanted. The spirit of um, po the spirit of poverty could do whatever it wanted in your life. The spirit of depression, the spirit of, you know, the, so these spirits before they actually do or achieve what they need to achieve in your life, wherever they've come from. Um, let's just talk about why they are there in the first place. They are there to um, have have a specific effect in your life. And in order for them to actually successfully achieve their agenda on you, they need your agreement. Now, you may say, yeah, but I never agreed to anything in the first place. Unfortunately, uh, the answer is uh, yes, you did. Um, most agreements, most things happen in the spirit realm in our dreams. The agreements are forged or the covenants are forged in our dreams. It, every time you've had a strange dream or every time you've had nightmares, those were entities of darkness uh, that are projected at you for whatever reason. And they visited you and they wanted to come in agreement with you. Um, and whatever they showed you, whatever you saw in the dream, uh, sometimes they don't even show you what they want to what they want to do to you. Like when you have a sexual dream, you don't even know what spirit that is. You don't even know what that spirit is. It may look like a specific person, you know, uh, but it, it, it's not. It's a masquerading spirit. It's it's a masquerading spirit or a pretending spirit or a spirit in a mask pretending to be someone you know. But that spirit could be the spirit of death, could be rejection, could be delayed, could be uh, poverty, could be disgrace humiliation it could be anything any spirit that's been projected at you to achieve a certain negative in your life right um and so when they when you so then you so you're saying yeah but i, I didn't agree to this um when you don't cancel those dreams and 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 cancel those covenants forged and overcome them by the blood of the lamb literally and all you have to do is just state that and say i cancel that dream i cancel that encounter i cancel every agreement that was made in that dream i cancel by the blood of the lamb when you don't do that then by default you're coming in agreement silence means consent we all know of that statement um if someone says something to you and you don't cancel it or you don't uh, you don't rebuke it or reject it openly, then it's automatic that you're agreeing to it. That's how things work in the spirit realm. Um, and in some cases, for example, it, in, in those encounters, for example, if you see yourself shaking someone's hand um, in the dream, that, that in itself is an agreement. We know that even in life, people shake hands in agreement. When you see yourself hug someone or when you see yourself kiss someone, those are all agreements, right? Um, and all this to say that whatever you see happening in the dream, some dreams are just nightmares um and whatever you see happening in the dream yes that's what the enemy wants to do to you but it cannot happen um if you do not agree with it if you if you if you say no no thank you that's not happening it, it, I, I reject that in jesus name it's not going to happen it's not going to manifest in the, the real the reality is the kingdom of darkness would love to manifest in the physical realm and they would love to just make your life a living horror a living nightmare what you're seeing in the dream is what they'd like to achieve in the physical realm is that's exactly what the way they want to take you in the spirit realm sorry in the physical realm so if you dream of yourself being an accident for example they they, they want exactly that they want you to have disasters in your physical life and so you have to rebuke it while it's still in that state of the dream. But more importantly, in your time on fasting, you are protected and you can state that and say the gracious hand of the Lord, uh, you know, it rests upon those for good who seek him. As long as I'm seeking you, Father, I'm protected. And as long as I'm seeking you, not even after the dream, as long as you continue to speak the word of God over your life, you are protected. When you speak the word of God over your life, you know, you are you are seeking the presence of God, you are seeking the kingdom of God in your life. So the hand of God will rest on you. The hand of God is constantly on you. But you have to confess this and you have to be conscious of this. Because if you're not, the enemy then can can scare you in any way. Sometimes these feelings of fear and confusion and depression even can just come on you anytime and you wonder where they've, they've come from. So sometimes you, you may not even, maybe you might not remember what you had a dream about, but you may feel yourself just being fearful. That's the spirit of fear trying to grip you and trying to get you to agree with it. And how do you agree with it? This is the physical real life now. How do you agree with the spirit of fear when you when you don't fight it back with the word of God, when you don't cancel it by the word of God? In fact, you come in agreement with it by saying, oh my God, I'm so scared. Oh, oh my goodness, I, I, I'm not, you know, and you keep confirming and reaffirming and confessing with your words that you're depressed or you're or you're scared or you feel confused. All those confu com uh, sorry, confessions with your mouth, they'll make that more and more reality. So you have to remember that the, the hand of God is constantly upon you as long as you're constantly seeking him. Thank you for listening. 
God bless you and have a lovely day. Thank you.